And speaking of speculation, let's talk about this Bray Wyatt situation that we're in. Because just when we thought we were starting to get some clarification, just when we thought that things were starting to come out of the fog, we see Uncle Howdy in a very human incarnation. He's very clearly a different entity. We see him again on Monday Night Raw as he comes out and laughs at Alexa Bliss and then the lights go out and we never see him again. Just when we're starting to get out of the fog, leave it to old Brizzy Wyatt to come back and pour a whole bunch of fog right back over us. The long Bray entrance still rocks my socks. I love it. With the, with the, I mean, I just feel like the music just builds tension so well as that piano is going boom, 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 and the lights going and it's beating along with the music and then the lights go, the light goes out. What's coming through that swamp door? And here comes Bray, and Bray immediately makes you realize something is different here when he sits in the rocking chair. And immediately, the rocking chair goes, okay, we're dipping backwards towards OG Bray Wyatt. And he says, we're here. We're here. But he says, we. We're here. Which is, of course, what he used to say when he would lead the Wyatt family to the ring. WrestleMania 30 era Bray Wyatt. (laughs) Blow out the lantern. Charlotte, North Carolina, we're here. <sighs> yep. And Bray, and Bray, Bray does that, and he, and, he, and he starts to make allusions to stuff we've seen before. He very quickly says, revel in what you are, which is a big quote that was a part of the whole uh, White Rabbit scenario. The whole series of White Rabbit vignettes, that was a quote that came up more than once. He said, I'm the color red in a black and white world, which of course goes back to the red ring that's been a part of this this Bray Wyatt thing the entire time. But I think, you know, the most important thing is that he said, I am Uncle Howdy. I am, he, he started making this list of who he is. And one of the people he said, that he was Uncle Howdy. I'm Uncle Howdy. But he said, I am him. I am Bray Wyatt. And the way he said it, he got that big pop going. But I am him. When somebody says, I am him, him in that scenario is usually the capitalized version of him. That's I am God. Bray is coming to you from this philosophical place that some people have where they believe that they are God in the sense that we are all God. We are all everyone. In your world, you are God. In my world, I am God. That's the way I took it when he said, I am him. But he specifically said, I am Uncle Howdy. I am. And it's like, I don't know if you are Uncle Howdy. Well, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know that that's true. He said that there was going to be a rebirth at the Royal Rumble. And I'm sitting here going, I feel like we haven't even gotten the full rebirth that we're getting now. I don't know if that means that it's the conclusion of the rebirth, but I feel like we there was a rebirth at Extreme Rules, but the birthing process has not completed. So I am unclear as to whether the rebirthing that we're going to see at the Royal Rumble is a rebirth from Extreme Rules or it's the completion of the birthing process that began at Extreme Rules. I think it's the completion of the rebirthing process that began at Extreme Rules because we're going to start where we end. We started with an acknowledgement of all those characters. We saw them all in the audience in physical forms. And now this is where we end. At the end, he went, run. Which, of course, is the old school Bray Wyatt. It was almost as if the physical attack that was thrust upon him by one Uncle Howdy two weeks ago on SmackDown opened the door to the old Bray Wyatt. 
Because on this episode of SmackDown related to this promo, a QR code came up. And when you scan the QR code, a video came up and it was old Firefly Funhouse Bray Wyatt. And he was saying, see you in hell. And he morphed into the fiend. And that was it. And it led to a lot of people wondering, are we going to see the fiend at the Royal Rumble? Maybe. I think that there's a lot of people who feel like the fiend was not completed. Uh, I don't think that people were very happy at all with the way that story came to an end. I don't know anybody that was like, oh man, yeah, the thing at WrestleMania with Alexa Bliss and then just ending there forever. That was awesome. I've never heard anybody say that. So there is still room for The Fiend to come back. I had thought when he introduced us to this new Bray Wyatt, he had said goodbye to all those demons of his past. But maybe Uncle Howdy has reawakened all those demons from his past. And I'm okay with that if that's the case. But I don't know that I believe that Uncle Howdy is Bray Wyatt and Bray Wyatt is Uncle Howdy. I saw them staring at each other. We all saw it. It wasn't a figment of anyone's imagination. L.A. Knight acknowledged it. I think. Maybe. And this is just a thought that's come into my mind. I hate to call it a prediction. Because I'm not sitting here saying this is where it's going. But it occurs to me that this whole thing with L.A. Knight and Bray Wyatt does not seem like it's the thing. It really seems like L.A. Knight just got swept up into this tornado that is Bray Wyatt. Bless his soul, L.A. Knight ultimately feels inconsequential to the greater Bray Wyatt story. It was just L.A. Knight was required to get under Bray's skin to begin the process of having Uncle Howdy come out and reawakening these demons. That said, I can't believe necessarily that Uncle Howdy and Bray are on the same page. Part of me, as I'm watching this, thinks, what if Bray is saying, I am Uncle Howdy, and Uncle Howdy is saying, no, son, you're not. What if, what if, what if Bray thinks he is Uncle Howdy, but Uncle Howdy is much more powerful than Bray is giving him credit? And that for the first time, this, this weirdness that exists within Bray Wyatt is going to spill out into physical form. We've already seen that it can happen. If Bray starts going down memory lane at the Royal Rumble, because we're going to see Bray wrestle, and it's going to be a pitch black match, a Mountain Dew pitch black match. By the way, Mountain Dew should probably pay if I'm going to talk about it on my podcast, I feel like I should also get some of that sponsorship money. But regardless, it's the Mountain Dew pitch black match. I'll, I would think that that means that obviously at some point the lights would have to be on because we have to see the match. Otherwise, we'll be totally lost. It will just be an audible experience. And this podcast, that can be okay for. But that match, no. You'd need some visual. I think we'll see uh, strobe lights. I think we'll see spotlights. I think we'll see the lights go off. I think we'll see the lights come back on. What if we figure out a way that every time the lights come back on, another incarnation of Bray Wyatt is in there? What if in this pitch black match, we start with the Bray that we've been seeing on SmackDown? And as the lights go off and we're seeing spotlights, we see chaos. We hear chaos. We don't really know what's going on. The lights come back on and there's Bray in a Hawaiian shirt. Lights go off, lights come back on, and there's Ramblin' Rabbit. Lights go off, lights come back on, and there's The Fiend. Lights go off, lights come back on, and there's Uncle Howdy. But what if the lights go off and lights come back on, and there's Uncle Howdy and there's Bray Wyatt? Uncle Howdy lays out Bray Wyatt. L.A. Knight gets the pin. L.A. Knight goes on, having beaten Bray Wyatt, brags about it, and it leads him to a story that we're going to someplace in the future 
you know, LA Knight is done with Bray Wyatt. But Bray is not done. Because Uncle Howdy not only attacking him but costing him the match has awakened something much deeper in Bray Wyatt. That's a, a permanent return of the fiend. I am sitting here telling you that I don't think it's far-fetched to say that what happens at the Royal Rumble could easily result in a big match between Uncle Howdy and The Fiend. There's just, it just started occurring to me this week. I feel like that's where we're going. I've said this before, from the beginning, it has felt like Bray's story is a story that exists independent of anyone else in the WWE. That Bray came back to WWE to tell his own specific story within the context of the WWE universe. But that's to say that Bray has this whole story mapped out for himself that has nothing to do with anything else going on on the WWE roster. This is not about Bray climbing up the ladder so that he can be the one to take the Intercontinental title off Gunther. This is not about Bray climbing the ladder so that he can be the one to finally beat Roman Reigns. And by the way, all the folks that said, you know, there are discussions about having Bray versus Roman Reigns. What happened to those discussions? Nobody's going to take ownership of that regardless. So I think that Bray is back to tell the story that Bray wants to tell. And in order to tell the story that he wants to tell, it can't interfere with any other story going on in WWE. Because otherwise, it's like, yeah, Bray, we'd love to do that, but so-and-so is busy doing this. Ah, uh, we have, we, we, yeah, no, that's fine, but so-and-so has plans to do that. Well, if Bray is the master of his own universe, which I think is what we're seeing, he can feel free to tell his own story. And I think that this story that we're seeing, and I would not be shocked if it draws out all the way to WrestleMania, I think we're going to see The Fiend versus Uncle Howdy. I think that's where we're going. 